Exotic Game here, back to explain structural integrity in 7 days to die in under 2 minutes. Starting with the basics, you want to divide the horizontal support by the mass. So if you look at wood, its mass is 5 and its horizontal support is 40. Divide 40 by 5, you get 8. So what that means is it can hold eight blocks of wood going to one side. Vertically, they can go indefinitely. And this goes for wood frames or concrete or steel. The material doesn't matter vertically. Four, five, six, seven, eight. If I add one more block, it will fall. It doesn't matter where I place this block, it will fall. So if, if it's eight just right here or if it's eight only back here, it will fall. So there, there you have it. It, that example holds true for if it's, you know, like this, 7, 8, fall. Yeah, see? Let's see if cobblestone's any different. If we click on cobblestone, 10. 10 mass, 120 horizontal support. So it can hold 12 blocks out any direction. 10, 11, this should make it 12. If I add one more block, there it goes. Concrete is 12. Well, concrete can hold the same amount of weight as cobblestone can horizontally. Now steel, steel is 300 divided by 20, which is 15. So steel is your go-to method if you want to make very complicated non-supported buildings. Now that's how this works if they are only supported by one beam. But what if they have two beams and they're being supported together? Now they share the load in this case, so for cobblestone it was 12, right? So it'd be 24. So if we place 24 blocks like this in between these two, that is the limit that they can hold. 23, 24, 25, and it falls. So at 25 it falls. That's what's important to note, is if you use cobblestone, then yes, it'd be 25. If you use steel, it'd be 30. If you use wood, it'd be 16. Now this all gets changed by how many pillars are connecting them together. As a little side note, I wanted to show you guys how this would work with the floating method that I've talked about before. So right here we have concrete, and concrete, if you remember, it can hold 12. Since we have two pillars, that's 24, even if they are floating. What's important to note here is the plates that I'm using to keep this floating count as a block. So right now I have 24 blocks up here, including the plates that are, are right here. So, boom. It all falls. Plates count the same as the blocks do, even with the even when they're floating in midair. Check out these videos on the left for more building horde base tips. And if you want more seven days to die content, subscribe to the channel. I give daily videos on how you can learn more about seven days to die. This is Exotic Gaming, a Deucing Out.